Previously on The Business. It is the business of sport. And today we're talking about this whole BCCI versus Cricket South Africa and the whole Indian tour issue, um, which has been hovering around for a while now. Wow. Just been joined on Skype by our good friend from Australia. Hi, He's mate. N- Hello, Dennis Friedman. How are you doing? G'day, how are we all? Yeah, all good, thank you, all good. Of course, for those that don't know who Dennis Friedman is, just uh, give everyone the lowdown. Uh, one of the, if not the most, um, I think it's probably the most popular, one of the, f- the most entertaining uh, Twitter handles, at Richie Benno, which uh, um, no longer exists. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, no longer exists. Now, you can follow him uh, at Dennis Friedman. Uh, it was on The Bounce, uh, the, the, the blog show, last week, and he's joining us on this show because of this uh, particular topic, Dennis. So thanks for joining us. Just hang in there. We'll keep you on the Skype for as long as we possibly can. In studio with us, we have Paul Harris, who is a former Protea 100 wicket-taking bowler. Hey, Hera. Good to you, Darren. Very All good. Right. All right. Now, a cricket guy in a suit as well, who's here every Thursday. And uh, apart from our two guests, we're also going to be chatting to Etienne Debrain, a former cricketer uh, who played for uh, the Lions and the Titans, right? He played for Easterns as well. And Easterns. Mm. Yeah, correct. He's going to be joining us because he's one of the people that is affected by this whole change of what should have been a three-test series or possibly even a four-test series. Yeah. has now become one of those kissing your sister two-test series uh, for India against South Africa. And I'm um, not sure, uh, Dennis, if we managed to have any luck with uh, any of our other bloggers slash people uh, that are also popular on Twitter at, at this stage. Uh, sorry, mate. They were a little bit uh, too scared to speak out a bit th- about the BCCI, so it's just me. All right. There it is. Dennis has brought up the whole crux of this matter, and this is what's getting up my nose, is that over the last couple of weeks, um, since this has become a, a, a big hot potato, <coughs> all right, What's getting up my nose is not the fact that it's literally a two-test series, but the reason why we've got there and how it's all come about. Because, um, first of all, uh, we're playing two tests because there's a personality clash between Haroon Logat and obviously some people at the BCCI that don't like him. So therefore, what, is, what really has got, got up my nose is the fact that we have been dictated to by the BCCI as to how many tests we will have how many tests India will play. And where they'll be played. And where they'll be played. Uh, who should be around and who shouldn't be around. And, um, and basically, that is it. And also, what's even got up my nose even more is the fact that we have basically wilted like flowers and gone, okay, l- the last few days we've gone, oh, we're so happy that we're actually getting the Indians to come and play here. So that's all been accepted. And as Dennis has just said, nobody, nobody wants to talk about it. I'd like to know from a business point of view, um, if I read into this and between the lines and all those nice things, is it a money issue? Is it, it, yeah, it, it, has, it has it got to do with, uh, with people making money? Are there, are there potentially uh, sponsors who are going to be seeing the upside of, of this, the, the situation? Well, I don't know if, I, Hera, I don't know if there are any sponsors that will see the upside because apart from your cricket sponsors who oh. sponsor the protests anyway, the exposure will be limited if there isn't a game in Cape Town on New Year. Yeah, I think the, the biggest losers are Blue Label. They they had the 2020 sponsor yeah. of our 2020s and we aren't playing any. They were supposed to be. I think they were supposed to be two. Yeah. Um, so they they'll be the biggest losers and it's a pity because they just they just come on board as well and they're a great sponsor and you know when you when you're losing games like this, as you said for silly reasons, just yeah. a personality clash, then it's uh, it's a bit sad. So you know I think that when you get South Africa, England, and and Australia together, I think um, you know together we can actually fight them. But one on one we we're struggling because they've got all the money. Well, but if you get those three together and say so we're just not going to play you. Then it's then it'll then then it'll actually have some clout, but that's the only way I see us getting around the whole issue. And who is going to stand up uh, to them? Because effectively, the ICC should be taking the lead here and going, "Listen, this is a scheduled tour. You will play the games that you are scheduled to play." But the ICC are toothless. Uh, no, I think I think they are playing. I think that they signed that they signed that. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a, a future tours program, and the the minimum amount of a tour is two tests and three ODIs. That's a minimum tour. So they are playing the minimum tour. So they haven't broken that contract, but the problem comes in is that ICC have never really put their foot down. I mean, obviously everyone uses DRS except for India. Uh-huh. They don't like it. Why? So they just don't use it. It's because, look, it has, it has uh, favoured them in a way not to have it because they've got lots of spinners and yeah. they tend to get away. You know, umpires don't like to give Sachin Tendulkar out either. So, you know, they, 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 they get away with a lot. So yeah. that's why they don't want to have it. But, um, um, you know, the ICC should say, right, it's a, it's a rule now. Everyone has to use it and mm. deal with it. Although the, it comes down to the, the, the whole question. In any sport, no one is bigger than the game. But when it comes to cricket now, the question is, 
Is India now bigger than the game? Is this what it's about? Because you asked about the money, and that's mm. what it's about. It's about the money, but in the, I think the other way. People are being affected here. I don't think anyone really makes money here, but because India basically financed cricket, the question's got to be asked. So if anyone stands up to them, you know, is it a case of spiting, uh, biting off your own nose to spite or cutting off your own nose to spite your face by going, well, then we'll pull our money out and will cricket be able to survive if India didn't exist? Those are the kind of questions hopefully we will get through this, uh, this morning in the business, which is proudly brought to you by First National Bank, Business Banking. More coming up in a moment, including what Gary Kirsten, Haroon Logat, and Ian Healy had to say to us in the last week. See how many of them were willing to say anything about this. All right, it's the uh, business of sport today with First National Bank, Business Banking. In studio, Paul Harris has joined the, uh, the regular crew. Um, it might be a very quiet, uh, quiet morning for you, Astrid. I by know. The looks of things. I, I, I hope you're not looking at me and thinking she's a she's a girl, so it's okay. <laughs> but I, the, the thing is that cricket is, uh, you know, increased in, in popularity in the female market in leaps and bounds over the last 10, 20 years. It absolutely has. Sixty-five percent of the supporters are female. Really? Mm. Wow. Uh, worldwide or here in South Africa? In South Africa. That's amazing. That's because all the boys are quite good yeah. looking. So, you know, from an outsider's point of view, you, yeah, well, okay, that's why you're watching cricket, then maybe we won't get much from you. But from an outsider's point of view, <laughs> maybe uh, you, you will be able to throw in a couple of questions as well. Uh, Dennis, I see you sending me messages on Skype. Um, I didn't quite catch them. They disappeared beforehand, but uh, basically you can share it with us. Now, based on just what we've started with, mm. how do you guys see it from your side, from Australia? Because when I spoke to Ian Healy yesterday, and we'll let you hear the clip in just a moment, uh, we said, look, you know, we talk about 200 million that gets lost. That's rand. So in exchange rate terms, it's probably about 30 million Aussie dollars that's going to get lost by the fact that we're not having a Cape Town test. Uh, when you yep. look at how well supported and how big it is uh, for this time of the year in Australia, you've got to be talking millions of dollars if they try to pull the same thing with you guys. Yeah, the, uh, the issue goes back to this um, FTP, the uh, Future Tours Program, and, uh, and in essence what the ICC attempt to do is give certainty to all the um, test playing countries about what's coming up for the next 12 months. And if you link it back to a business perspective, um, those respective boards then go out and sell sponsorship and TV rights and organise grounds and all these things come with a cost and they also... Um, uh, have a, have their reputation linked to them now. When the um, BCCI start stuffing around with um, tours at the last minute to allow Sachin to play two final tests, and then blame it on Lorgat as some sort of way to get out and, and win some brownie points and throw some punches, um, if you think the impact on um, um, cricket South Africa, what you've got now is um, a board who's probably been running around for 12 months selling TV rights to. Um, to your TV channels and, and um, selling um, catering rights and selling corporate packages and so forth and, and the confidence drops out of the market. So for your local uh, cricket revenues going forward, it's going to be very hard for um, Cricket South Africa when they're um, organising future tours with India to be able to um, uh, ask for the monies that they, that they probably deserve because there will be some risk attached to it and in the business world that's unacceptable. Mm. I, don't, I want to go back and maybe let's. Uh, we're going to. I think we need Fani on the line as well. Fani de Villiers, who um, bravely or stupidly, one of the two has been uh, quoted as making some. Uh, it's just funny when I read the article in the Times of India. He's quoted today, uh, has a full go, but at the end he kind of almost looks like he's like, you know, okay. But listen, we like you guys, and you guys are, are really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll it's a bit like taking on the CEO in the boardroom and then and then realizing what you've done. Yeah. Funny enough, just before we go to Ian Healy, I had a conversation, and this goes back to this whole thing about nobody, no, whether you work for CSA or you slightly link to CSA or you've got a, a toe with CSA uh, and also a toe in Indian cricket somewhere or another, does not want to say a word about this. It's almost like the mafia, these guys. Uh, it's starting to sound reaction. a bit like FIFA. It's, it really is. These guys, everyone is too terrified. At uh, Mark Boucher's uh, tribute evening where Ian Healy was on Wednesday night, I uh, was having a chat to... Uh, maybe we don't mention his name, <laughs> okay? But just uh, he's, he's high ranking in, in CSA right now. No, I wouldn't mention his name. I won't mention no. his name, um, but he is high ranking in CSA as someone that, that does have big decision making powers. And the conversation I was having uh, with him uh, late on in the evening was about this whole thing, uh, and obviously what he said about the actual tour uh, off the record. But when I said the question is, well, why don't you guys come onto our radio shows or any radio show and talk about it or talk to the media about it and, and, and give your side of, you know, what you feel about it? And the, the response was, the best CEOs in the world you never hear from. 
I disagree completely well, with course, that. Well, of course, because I immediately mentioned Michael Jordan. Absolutely, not, <laughs> and, and, and some fantastic international examples as well. Yeah. Uh, Sun Microsystems, you know, the biggest CEOs in the world who lead the biggest mm. listed companies in the world are quite happy yeah. to speak to the media and appreciate the, the importance of that. You yeah, have I, to. I, I and why, why should cricket be any different? It's run it like a business. It's about money. It's, it's about fear, generating right. revenues. It's it's fear. Fear. That was a lame excuse to try and say that I, you know, our CEO doesn't need to talk to anyone because that's what make, makes a great CEO. What a load of boulder dash. Anyway, um, and, and I hope you'll be able to hear this as well, uh, um, Dennis. Um, you are hearing Harrow and everybody else, right? Yeah, loud, loud and clear. Okay, cool. This is what Ian Healy had to say on the show yesterday when we spoke to him on our Cricket Guy in a Suit uh, feature yesterday afternoon. Final one, uh, Ian, I know that we've got Australia coming up. Uh, a lot of ch chat has been about the India tour coming to South Africa. Uh, but then afterwards we have got Australia. And thank God it is a three-test series because uh, personally I, I don't know what why we end up sitting with two test series particularly when one plays against two in the world as we're going to have here in South Africa when India come here and obviously you know it goes down to what demands have been made by the the BCCI and we've uh, we've actually had a, a subject going around on Twitter going uh, you say in sport that no one is bigger than the game no matter what sport you're talking about but in cricket are we in danger of that 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 whole premise being blown out the water by scenarios like this uh yeah in india are very are very uh, powerful leaders and uh that they are behaving uh, unpopularly is that a word yeah uh, uh, well it is now as leaders as leaders of our game they they threaten to to withdraw things and they you know they they, they have got a lot of power and they're using it um so that's a danger especially when we've got a sort of a, a toothless icc which is just um you know me member nations being represented by their chairman it's it's not a real governing body as such so so that can be influenced by vote by vote stacking, you know. Mm. So yeah, the yeah, the game's in danger. But but you know, rather than think about that, the game's pretty strong. Um, it is a it is reasonably unethical, I reckon, what India's done to South Africa. Uh, knowing that South Africa really pulled them out of a hole with the IPL mm -hmm. a couple of four years ago, I think it was. Yeah. So South Africa probably could have uh, expected a bit better from India, but didn't get it. So. Uh, it's a gripe, but um, you know we should should just look to develop the power that in India have got for the good of the game and uh, try to work with them a bit better than than take them on all the time. Yeah, because I mean you talk about the amount of money uh, that that gets lost, but we talk about Australia and and your Christmas period, and obviously I mean you get ninety thousand people in Melbourne and Sydney's full, and you and you get them there for all five days in a series like this in particular now. How do you think Australia would react if, if it was uh, India coming to you for what would normally be at least a three-test series and they come and say, we're only playing two because of the same premise? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, you know, as I said, unethical, I reckon, um, and and not good enough. Um, you, you know, you, you're getting looked after on one hand and it's got what, what goes around has got to come around and, and India just just getting it all the time rather than giving it too much. Um, so no, Australia would react, you know, as forcefully as as, as South Africa have. Uh, that they would play every card they have known to them. But but you know, India threatened to go home over the the race issue between mm. Abhijan Singh and Andrew Simons and Matthew Hayden a few years ago, uh, and Australia, you know, bowed to them. Um, they just couldn't couldn't bear to lose fifty million dollars, which yeah. is what it was reported they're going to cost them. So. So, yeah, no, India know that. They, they play that card and test out plenty of nations, and generally they come up trumps the Indians. All right, so, uh, Dennis, let's just go to you on yeah. this one. Uh, uh, can we gather from what Ian says, as much as he's as outspoken and saying that it is childish and stupid, the way uh, they're behaving, that yep. uh, even the... Um, I don't want to say the mighty Australia because they're not mighty at the moment, but uh, <laughs> they might. They were some time ago. But can I say the, the generally very abrasive and uh, in-your-face sort of uh, aggressive Aussies that would even um, fade and 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 wilt like flowers when it comes to the might of the BCCI. Uh, I've got a, I've got a theory here, Darren. Um, it, the last time something like this happened in world cricket was in the 70s and a bloke called Kerry Packer took on the English cricket board and the Australian cricket board and created World Series cricket because both of them were being idiots. 
um, and change the game. So you need someone with some some balls to take it on. And I think you you made the point earlier. You know why don't South Africa, Australia, and England just walk off and start their own thing? Um, but what you've got is a symptom of the problem, and the problem is that you've got a governing body in the ICC that, as you rightly said, is a toothless tiger. Um, and you need to change that. And and there's examples in world cricket where it can be done. Um, if I look at what Cricket Australia has done, it used to be. Um, a representative of each of the states on that board and New South Wales used to dominate and, and if you look at Australian test teams over the years, the, the, the running joke here was if you won a, t- a cap for New South Wales you basically won yourself a baggy green but they've restructured the board and now you have um, one voting member from each state and three independents so you've got nine members there and by 2017 the whole board of nine will be fully independent so the states have lost their power but the board is acting independently for the best interests of the game now, until we have something like that in, with the ICC, where it's not represented by the countries, but it's represented by an independent board running the game on behalf of the countries and doing the best for everybody, then you'll keep having this symptom where uh, um, this symptom coming on where um, the big bully in the schoolyard gets to push his way around because it's very hard for anybody else to stand up. Mm. All right. Uh, we've also been joined by Etienne De Bruyne. Etienne, uh, welcome to the show. All right, nice to have you. Just speak into your mouth, please. You're very, you're very low, and you're going to hear Fanny de Villiers' phone ringing just now. Uh, Harry had to quickly run out and just... Hey, Fanny. Harry? Hey, Fanny, it's Darren and Harry in uh, Cast of Thousands here at Balls Radio. How's it going? Hello, fine yourself. All right, thanks. Thanks for joining us, Fan. Uh, we also got Dennis Friedman from Australia uh, on the line. He's just... Um, given quite a few uh, interesting points about this whole thing about is the rest of the world just going to sit back and, uh, you know, wilt and, and just go into our little shells whenever the BCCI bark and tell us what they want and how we and how we must uh, handle our affairs at home. And also, where do you draw the line? So in terms of what, what Dennis just said, and this will also give background to Fani as well, uh, Harrow, uh, your comments on, on what Dennis has just said and what we heard from Ian Healy? Yeah, I think Dennis is spot on. I think that uh, you, know, you need an independent board of the ICC. I think that uh, it's a conflict of interest if you have the countries running it. And then they need to get harder. And you can't have a ICC where you have no rules and regulations for, for one country and a thousand for another. So I think they need to come harder. Uh, I think it has to come from the ICC. It can't come from, it's more difficult for it to come from the, from the, from the individual nations. And I think the ICC need to grow some and, and, um, and put their foot down. Fanny, what do you say? Um, Darren, in the first place, I think one must be very, very careful not to run away with something that might not be an issue. If you guys can put me five basic influences of India on the table that was unfair, then we've got a point. Then we've got a point to discuss. Firstly, uh, everybody's probably saying that um, oh, what's been happening with South Africa this day, that's a hell of a point. It's not a point. I'm in business. Of, of, I'm in actual fact, I'm involved in three businesses. And one of the main principles of business, and let's just talk about the issue that started this whole affair of Hurun Loga. The main, one of the biggest pillar of business is relationships with your main accounts. If I've got a company, I will not employ anybody in my company doesn't matter if the guy's got 10 degrees doesn't matter if he's if he's right for the company uh, when it comes to administration that is if he is an enemy of my main account i will not employ him because that will be a bad business decision not okay. even a question we've been warned they are the main account they are 70 percent of of south african cricket cricket's money if i believe if, if that's true and if that is the case then their request wasn't unnecessary their request wasn't unreasonable rather it was a proper request this guy was a bit of a bully he was probably a tough oak when it came to certain decisions that 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 india got forced into or that they that they try and force them into and uh, he's made enemies with us but finally can i just come in there because once again does it do do you see this as a personality clash because the, the decisions are made based on the fact that they don't like somebody who effectively was in a position where he was, he felt he was doing his job. And, you know, to, where doesn't do you draw matter, the line doesn't, again? It doesn't matter if it was relationship related, if it was personally related, if it was issues related, if it was money related, it was done through the ICC in a different capacity to South Africa. It doesn't matter if the guy had an affair with somebody else's wife. It's, that is not the issue. The, the issue is he is an enemy of our biggest account. There is a lack of relationship between our best account and somebody else and and as a business principle i will not employ somebody if that is the case and that's where we've made our mistake can i can what the ethics is wait just a second doesn't matter what the ethics is it doesn't matter if he was right or wrong 
uh, if he wanted to move games to other places because of influence. It doesn't matter what the decision was. The fact is he's an enemy of our main account. They've warned us, and that's where the problem lies. Now, I want to get back to the original point I made. But can I just come in, in on that point there? Uh, because uh, we're talking about, uh, I think you can uh, adapt this into any business scenario. So if you have somebody who is like, because everyone's saying the ICC is toothless here, the ICC is supposed to be the, uh, the organization that actually controls and looks after cricket. So you have somebody there. When there's a disagreement then between the, uh, uh, someone that is heading up the ICC and the BCCI Indian cricket, uh, Indian cricket don't like it, they get to actually then make the call. Then what's the point of having the ICC? Why don't we just say BCCI, you run cricket then in that case. Where do you draw the line? We're talking about the South African issue. That's actually the main principle. If your discussion today is ICC, yes, then I'll agree with you. The, our discussion is not that. Our discussion but this is where roots India, stems from. I know, yes, but that's not the issue. The issue is, are we going to allow India to bully? And I'm asking you guys, with the discussion you have, have they been a bully in the situation that, that we're in now? I don't think so. Well, can Everybody we... else calling them a bully. I think it's a basic, simple business principle that, I, that they apply. Chaps, if you employ this guy, doesn't matter what capacity he was the enemy against us or how he tried to influence our business. If you employ this guy, this guy, there's going to be repercussions. I can tell you now, Darren, if you had myself, yourself, Harry, and whoever on the board to make a decision on who's going to be the CEO of South African Cricket, we would not have selected Orun Lugat because we know he's going to influence our main account. Let's have a look at the ripple effect. The ripple effect is not just this 200 million we're going to lose here. Yeah? The ripple effect on, 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 on the IPL. Who says that they won't influence the IPL scenario now and kick South Africa out and say, wait, if you come in as a third party in the IPL, because all the millions and millions and millions are going to start rolling in now from the IPL towards South Africa because we're one of the three countries that started the IPL. It's, it's not a same business principle to employ anybody that's an enemy of any account doesn't matter what happened in the past doesn't matter what he's done wrong or what he's done right so it's basically right. what what we need to do then is every time we choose someone to head up the csa we've got to send that for approval uh, no, no, to the bcci no no, no, no you're generalizing now you, you cannot make anything that's exceptional on the rule as a general point that is not a general issue i want you guys to tell me give me another two or three or four issues where india have been a bully Come, give me one. All right, well, let's start it out there. Signing, uh, you can't say signing the deal, uh, signing the, 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 the referral is they don't want to do that, that they're bullying the rest of the world. That's a decision that was a, that was a democratic decision that they made not to use it. But, but hold on, Fanny, that's, that's one there. And, and, and I want to bring in Harrow and, and, uh, and Dennis Friedman from Australia on the line here. But that is one again. What right do India have when the rest of the world say we will adopt DRS that they say we're not going to use it? I mean, again, w w you know, it's, it's one rule for mm. one and it's, everyone else has to go with the other rules. I know, I, know you, I know your point about, yes, they are, the, you know, they are the money in cricket at the moment. And we did say, ask the question, if Indian cricket uh, were isolated from the rest of cricket, would the rest of cricket survive? Uh, and, and probably it would be in a, a lot of trouble. I don't know. But I'm just saying one rule for them and, and, and everybody else has to abide by the other rules. Dennis, what are, what are, what are your thoughts and in, and in answer to what Fani just had to say? Yeah, uh, g'day, Farney. Look, I think uh, Farney made some good points, but um, he missed the start of the conversation. I think um, some overlays here is that from a business context, I actually see um, the BCCI and the CSA as divisions of a bigger business, and the CEO, which is meant to be the ICC, is not managing their senior leaders well. And what you've now got is this infighting and this spat. They're both, they're, they should be subservient to the ICC, and the ICC should be managing the game. It shouldn't be the respective boards going out and getting what's best for them at any particular short moment in time because the long-term view is, is gone. I do agree with Farney that um, given that that is the case, though, and we don't have utopia in how this thing is managed, that there needs to be some, uh, some management of personalities. But, there, the, but uh, you know, um, there is some bullying that the BCCI have done. You know, they've banned Pakistani players from the IPL. They've... Um, um, they, they threatened to withdraw from a tour in Australia not long back because Harbhajan Singh had a fight with Andrew Simons. Um, that, you know, um, and they were also accused of ball tampering. I mean, if you remember when Sashin was accused of ball tampering, they, they threatened to withdraw from cricket from, from the whole world. You know, they, they do some crazy things. And I think it's because they don't have a CEO on top managing them well in a business context. Arrow, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. I think. I think that the ICC need to go grow some. That's. I think that that's the, the area of concern. I do agree with Farney though. I think that it wasn't good business sense at this time to appoint Tarun, even if he was the best for the job, uh, because it has cost us a lot of money. 
and um, and you got as a you know as a as a board you you got to look after the financial well-being of your of, of cricket South Africa. So I think that was a mistake. But there has definitely been bullying by by India, and there's no doubt about that. They do flex their muscles and they don't get their own way, and um, and someone's got to stand up to them. And if it's not in England, us and Australia together, then it has to be the ICC. Funny. Every single point you guys have made was a reaction of a big company versus the smaller companies. In my business world that I'm in, in the, in the mining industry, the big accounts are actually saying to you, listen, chaps, if you guys want to keep our business, we want, uh, a, com- we want a, a, a back payment of so much and so much versus your account for, for social responsibility, and then you do it. So the stronger you are, the more you can actually shout the art as long as it's in brackets, as long as it's inside the parameters of the business you, you're doing. Every single point that we've made now from the IPL to Pakistani India, we know where it comes from. It's a business sense proposal not to play the Pakistanis because of, probably because of what happened. Even, even when, they, when they said um, Tendulkar did this and that wrong, why wouldn't they make a noise? Everybody else would have done it too. So again, I'm asking you guys, come give me the true, the true bullying that has taken place because of somebody that's stronger than anybody else. This is a business world we're in. We're not dealing with a sport anymore. We've taken it yeah. towards the business world with business principles. And I can tell you now, every single one that you're hearing of, I can relate to. Because it, it happens in, in, in my businesses too. It happens, it happens all over when you've got big accounts. That the guys do want to streamline, that they do become important. And for us just to call them bullies and to call them uh, names at the end of the day and say that they're unfair is not true. Yes, let's talk about the ICE issues. The ICE issues are not strong enough. Yes, of course, the ICE don't want to get involved in dealing between two countries because there's obviously a lot of talking and they can't be really a middleman when it comes to Amanda Games and the tours and et cetera. But so the ICE... But funny, sure, them I mean, come on. Just, in an easier way. just from the reaction of people and, and the fact that nobody wants to actually even discuss this and, and have a conversation like we are about this issue... It, isn't it not about that and more just that everyone is completely in fear of the BCCI in one way or the other? Or, or the, the, the little bit of fighting behind the scenes is probably based on the little bit of business principles. That's also an issue. That's also a possibility. And I can tell you now, most people that don't want to shout the arts, that don't want to go the route of what I'm saying, get rid of Arun Logat. Doesn't matter how good he is for South African cricket. Long term, nobody is worth two, three, four, five hundred million, if not a billion rand. Not one single person in this country, not even the president of this country, is worth that kind of money for any company if you're going to lose it. He will never, in his reign as the CEO of South African cricket, recoup that money mm. in his time. So that's business related principles. And, and that's why I'm standing by saying, listen, we're shouting the Archie against people that hasn't really, in a court of law, done anything wrong. Signing off the DRS at the end of the day, there's no rules. You're calling it rules. There's no rules. They said, chaps, this is what we want to do. You guys are allowed to vote. They started the democratic process. In actual fact, Arun, that's his own baby. Mm. He started that, that democratic process of everybody must, take, uh, must do it or if you don't want to. Uh, he never said anybody. If he said that you guys can vote about it and, and, and decide if you want to use it. And if one of the two countries don't want to do it, uh, then we don't have to. They started that. Well, but surely in a, in a democratic environment, which you would think that even the ICC would be one, that if uh, every single one of your... Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, a democratic environment doesn't necessarily mean the one that's got the most money gets the, gets uh, gets the say. It's uh, you know, it's like if if everyone barring one votes that we're going to use this, then in a democratic environment, the one that doesn't want to use it has to go with the rest of the group. I yeah, mean, that's I how it works with, anyway. I agree with that. Let's keep, let's keep it let's keep let's keep it to cricket terms. If the bylaws of the ICC say that in a uh, that eighty percent vote can cause a rule and can change uh, uh, the line of attack on different rules. Yes, but they haven't done that. It's a democratic system. Everybody or nobody. That everybody in this specific case means that two countries play together if they both agree. That's the rule. That's the law they made. That is a rule. All God's own baby most probably when it comes to, or the people in the ICC when it comes to setting down the rules. Then the ICC say, right, from today on we're going to change the voting. If 80% of the countries in the world votes towards the rule then it changes. It doesn't matter who. They haven't got that. But the ICC so, say that basically if India don't like it, then they're just going to say no, we can't do it that way. So I mean, what, what has come out of here so far this morning basically is the existence of the ICC in today's cricket is pointless because they have absolutely no power um, to, to, to manage the game. Well, I think I think there's probably 98 other points that they do manage properly and that they do play a big role in. We just we can just have a look at the mobilising of the development of the game 
towards other countries. So there's quite a let's be let's be honest, Darren. There's quite a lot of issues that you need a governing body for. But when it comes to the intricacies between two countries, when it comes to the intricacies between two uh, smaller accounts, surely that should stay with the countries. And I can see that that has taken a place. And if that is not happening anymore, then we must go the route of making it and changing those rules. But they haven't. Mm. So we can't point fingers to the ICC if, if those rules are not there yet to, to, to push them into corners. Until those rules are there and they break a solid rule where you can take them to court, then we can have this kind of discussion. I think the reality is they are the strongest in the world. They are the most proactive in the world. They are the best in the, country, in the world when it comes to proactiveness. Let's face it, they've gone even past Australia when it comes to the IPL and a lot of other issues. Ozzy was ruling that in the past. Um, we came up with T20 ideas when I stopped playing in 1998. We never took it to the next level. England took it to the next level. So in a way, we're not the very, we're not the most proactive country in the world when it comes to cricket. And we're paying that penalty. We are a reactive management system. That's what we've been for a long time. We know how we've gone through CEOs, and then we know of the corruption issues. We know of the World Cup. We are a reactive union. And, and let's not expect too much from a system that's not strong enough to actually stand their ground. Mm. Those guys are doing it better and more effective. doesn't matter if we want to call them corrupt or bullies. They are more effective. And, and even Australia is more effective than us. So I can understand in the business world that South Africa can get bullied in a, in a way, just the way we run our fees. So okay. uh, it's, not, it's not all their fault. All right. Just uh, before we let you go, Fani and uh, Dennis are going to hang on for us. Now we've still got somebody else waiting on the line. He's been listening to this with interest, who is one of the, uh, the people at the other end of the chain, one of the people that whose business is affected by decisions like this. Um, and and we're going to get his comments in, in a short while. But um, just some of the tweets coming through. Brian Stoddart going, we had appointment in the first place given track record. I think he's talking about Haroon there. Mm. Uh, Bruce K. Uh, only joined halfway through the discussion. Really wants to listen from the beginning. Bruce, we can tell you. Uh, we will have the podcast up very shortly after the show. So you can listen to the whole thing from the top, including the comments of Ian Healy yesterday and uh, the stuff that Dennis has said uh, and, and Harrow as well. Uh, Sean says, the way Fani describes the BCCI as a business and its actions, we could be, uh, we would be calling the competition commission. <laughs> uh, great comment there, Sean. And Peter Miller saying, no matter how good Logat is for CSA, he should go. Says it all, says Peter Miller. Finally, we appreciate your time, but thank you very, very yeah, much last, for joining us. Thanks, Juan. Last, last thought and probably a cliche, beggars can't be choosers, Darren. Yeah. And we're in a situation where we are sitting with hands open and hoping for everything to come our way. So to answer your question, Ian, it's all about the cash. There you go. <laughs> it's all about the cash. And who's got, he who has the money wins. wins. Exactly. Yeah. Fani, thanks a lot. Bro. Thanks, Fani. Cheers. Thank you, Vanier. Bye-bye. There we go. It's Fani de Villiers. Etienne, are you still there? I'm here. I'm here, Doug. Listening uh, with interest. Listen to everything. Yeah, yeah. definitely. This is, all, this is all happening way above you because basically, and we're going to get back to you in a moment, uh, we're going to talk because okay. you're one of the guys that gets affected down the chain. Uh, yeah. You basically do hospitality packages and stuff like that. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, uh, and you losing money because of this uh, decision, the fact we're only playing two tests and there isn't a Cape Town test, right? Yeah. Yeah, look, Darren, the, the main thing is uh, when features goes out two months before and then you, see, you work out your packages right over the country and everything and then uh, all of a sudden everything changes. And we all know in this country, uh, for example, rugby is well-supported crowd-wise. Cricket is, we need that, you know, people must go to the stadium to watch cricket. But now, uh, if you look at the hospitality uh, point of view, uh, the impact here is quite big. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we don't only do hospitality in Gauteng, we do Cape Town, Durban, everywhere. Yeah. And now you lose test matches or T20 internationals. And T20 internationals is the biggest one where you fill up your suites and it's packed. Um, mm -hmm. Test matches, not that much. But we lost all the T20s. We lost... Um, for whatever ODIs all over the country. So it's a massive impact on, on the hospitality on company. Yeah. See it now because you have to pay your suite. And you only pay your suite through international games. You don't pay your suite through domestic yeah. cricket. Not a, so it's massive. I, I promise you, no wonder it sits with a test match that's all before Christmas in Gauteng. Everyone is not here. Cape Town lost everything. They've got still Aussie in February, March. Um, so, yeah, that, that and it's, for us, it's, it's not... It, it, uh, but what can we say? Right? As you guys said, it's all about money mm. and CDI and, and everything. But uh, realistic-wise, this is where we sit now. This is the fixtures that we got. 
um, and we have to work around that. And I don't know, I feel sorry for stadiums because it's not their fault. Um, and then sweet holders, um, even corporate sweet holders. Uh, they, and, but hospitality-wise, it's a massive impact on us, uh, huge. What, what, uh, can you put a figure to what, uh, I mean, basically what you'd be losing? Look, if you look at, uh, Darren, if you look at a, um, a, a test, uh, say, an ODI uh, ticket in a suite, private suite hospitality, full hospitality, you talk about around about 2,000 rand per person getting there, then everything is... Um, that is a, that's a 24 city seater that you've got. So that thing pays mm. your box. Uh, almost your box. So if you have two or three of them, you sort it for the season. Yeah. But now you lose uh, a, a T20 or an ODI. I mean, that is severe damage and planning that we need to do now to see where can we sort out the suites where we've got um, um, at stadiums, you know. And yeah. look, figure-wise, uh, just to run a suite, hospitality wise you talk 200,000 turnover a year wow that's what you need to get in to make sure it's a proper VIP uh, mm. suite but um, now I mean you lost six years now what now and they spoke about Pakistan coming or, or something like that next month I don't know what's going to happen there well, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, apparently there's no one available to fill the gaps that's what I've heard there's no so, one available and maybe before the end of the show <laughs> I'm going to put it out there um, before someone else does it and then you know takes the credit we've been chained to Harrow but uh, what I think would be a really good uh, thing to fill the gap here and actually you know help guys like yourself and 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 we you know when you talk about those kind of figures you start adding all the other uh, what is it concessionaires people that are selling various things oh, yeah. memorabilia yeah. Or, or you know even your ice cream vendors and the guys around yeah. there and the bars yeah. around there and and the people that go to the bars to watch the cricket and uh, Absolutely. you know then you can start seeing where this 200 million rand uh, figure starts to come from and that's just starting from the bottom before you start to talk about the big boys yeah. and how much he's been lost in advertising TV, uh, rights. TV rights and stuff like that so yeah. so Etienne yeah I mean from from your point of view our, uh, our commiserations that mm -hmm. uh, you know that that for you you don't have a, a, an opportunity to have a say in this matter you've just got to go yeah. with whatever um, Cricket South Africa agrees to do and Cricket South Africa has to go with whatever this, the ICC do and the ICC aren't doing anything so they have to go with what the BCCI wants let's just hope that they don't ask Dale Stane to come or four paces otherwise we only play one test because then you lose more money it's also credibility for for etienne as well because i mean if he if, well, if, he if, some. if india yeah true <laughs> but if but if, if, if india come back here again let's say at a later stage and he wants to sell his you know corporate boxes seats in his corporate boxes people are going to say well no yeah i'm not going to buy them because i don't know if they're actually going to rock up yeah, exactly so you've got uh, to yeah for the, the major thing is also this can't happen again look it happened now um but now is it going to happen again maybe in two or three years time I hope not. Um, I hope they, they solve this problem and, and get the relationship going, I mean, and, and get the people in the stands. You know, we, we've got great stadiums here, but no one wants Misty Cricket. Um, I don't know why, but why, why is everyone watching Curry Cup, for example? It's the same level. I mean, and the stadiums are three quarters full in rugby, but cricket-wise, we're struggling, and now we're getting less. Mm. The nationals, um, it's it's concerning, and for uh, the best point of view, very very concerning. Darren. All right, Etienne, yeah, we appreciate your time, but uh, all the best, and uh, and thanks for joining us on uh, the business with First National Bank Business Banking today. Thanks, thanks Etos. Cheers, thanks. buddy. Bye bye. Thanks, right. Cheers, my mate. Bye. So there we have it. We've had it from, um, you know, from former cricketers and and, and people that are involved. Um, we've even had Pat Simcox weighing in on Twitter here, um, and he's uh, he's just gonna, you go fine. <laughs> so Pat getting right behind his mate. Um, so lots of tweets coming through as well. David Atkins, uh, if they uh, knew it was going to annoy the BCCI, why weren't they prepared for the reaction? All right, this is a, a tweet coming through from David Atkins right now. If they knew it was going to annoy the BCCI, why weren't they prepared for the reaction? Harrow, before we let you go. Yeah, that's it's a good point. I mean, there have been a few. I, I do think, though, that uh, the BCCI have been, I think, funny said they're not bullies, but I think they are. I think there's enough evidence there to show that they have been bullying and they have flexed their muscles. But then his point about Haroon is also a fair one. So there have been some good points. Um, some people will sit on the one side and others will sit on the other. But um, I think that we've got to try and find a way to get that relationship back to where it was. Because about a year ago, we it was just very good. We've got to appoint people that they approve. 
of well, that's unfortunately the way it's going to go at the moment. But um, you know, if the ICC can maybe grow some, then maybe it'll be a diff bit of a different kettle of fish. They shouldn't really have a say in who our CEO is, really. Yeah. I mean, that's not. That's not. None, it's none of their business. I suppose really. it's the same. Uh, um, Astrid, uh, would I be wrong in saying that when uh, F and B appoint their next CEO? That uh, the person that puts the most money into the bank needs to be uh, give it the thumbs up. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. I've, I've got a serious problem with with the ethics of of what's being said and mm. and the, in and a business the, sense, it makes no. It doesn't actually yeah. make sense. You know, if, if if one looks at a sponsorship, you know, when you when you offer a sponsorship to a, a client. Um, you don't give them the right to tell you how to run your business. It's the same as, as FNB. They don't send us, you know, pages and pages of instructions on what to do on the show every day. Oh, you, well, you don't get them. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, it's, dear. it's just, it's, it raises yeah. some very, very uncomfortable ethics for me. Oh, yeah. If they're saying this is how business is run, no, that's not how business is run. Mm. Um, they'd have some serious challenges in... in, in in the context of some interesting laws and acts coming out in South Africa, treating customers fairly, Consumer Protection Act, the customer actually comes first. Well, that's business. what I was going to say, is I think the, 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 the voting public are going to vote with their feet. Yeah. Uh, they're just not going to get themselves to the stadiums. They're going to be going, well, we don't need this. We'd rather just stay at home and watch that watch on the TV. Yeah, exactly, which is what a lot of them do anyway. We're going to just hold it there for a moment. Harry, I know you've got to go because you've got more pressing matches like golf. Yes. Uh, but thanks for, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, thanks, we'll Thank catch up much. with you next Thursday on uh, on on uh, Cricket Guy in a Suit with Thank colleagues. Thank you very much. And Cheers, Zara. And remember, Cheers, uh, 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 remember, head up in four, sir. So. Don't worry. That's uh, Paul Harris. He plays over 14 and regularly shoots under par. So, yeah, he's eth we need to check the ethics of his goals <laughs> sometimes. Uh, thank you, Patrick, who just said, don't sell India the rights to TV. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, that's going to happen. Thanks for your input. So, we're going to sum up this, uh, this topic. I and just, just, just want to say my, my two cents worth with this. With, I mean, I've just been listening very carefully to what's going on. And I don't want to point out the obvious, but it is a very tangled mess, isn't it? It's just, what, what happened to the game of cricket? Oh, where, did, where did it get lost? Where the money came in. It's yeah. the same. When, it's like rugby. When rugby was amateur and people still go back to remember the days and when rugby was amateur because there was no money involved. Once the money gets in, it's when all of these other things start to play, play a role. And yeah. uh, I mean, Dennis, and I see you just tweeted now, finally debates like he bowled, but I'm still at the <laughs> crease, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, yeah, thanks for your patience. Uh, just to, to bring you back in here, in summary. Yeah, look, uh, yeah sure, Darren. Look, I think there's a couple of issues here. One is, um, you, you have a pure form of capitalism, if we link it back to business, that's running um, a sport. And you've got BCCI, who has a monopoly of a billion people, um, using their market power. And I think one of your other panel members rightly pointed out, there's in, in the real world, in real business, you have competition and consumer laws that protects that. And, mm. and when you overlay the spirit of sport and the BCI's charter to actually put cricket first, then maybe some sort of communist <laughs> um, uh, market mechanism is slightly better. And, and, and I, I relate this to, um, if you look at someone like Manchester United, mm -hmm. bigger than the biggest club in the world, but they're subservient to the EPL and they do that beautifully. The Yankees in Major League Baseball are the biggest baseball club in the world, but they, for the good of the sport, they're subservient to Major League Baseball. Even in Australia, we have the Australian Football League, the AFL. And one of the big teams here is Collingwood. They have over 80,000 members who pay a subscription every year. And so they clearly dominate the competition. But they, for the good of the game, they work underneath the commission or this independent commission of the AFL in a subservient manner, take their lot for the good of the game so that everybody survives and everybody gets their piece and, and the game grows mm. rather than one person dominating and, and everybody else feeling like you and I are feeling now. Um, where we have this capitalist uh, system where we have a, a dominant market player and, and, and so somebody wins, but everybody else is losing. And, and, and that's fine in, in, in straight business, potentially in, in what Farney's doing in a mining industry in a global scale. But here we have an overlay, which is sport, and sport has, an ov uh, um, has Im inputs like culture and tradition and history and, and honour and so forth. And if you take that away, then, uh, then, then we've lost um, the essence of what cricket is all about. Yeah, and it comes back to my very first point. My first question, uh, you know, in all sports, and, and you mentioned Manchester United as well, the difference here is, and, and I think maybe it comes down to the first two of the first questions I asked. The first one is, would cricket survive without India? At the moment, probably not. Well, we'll test cricket. Let's, let's look at it this way. Um, do you, if we had to take India out of the equation, would cricket survive? Absolutely, 110%. Because what would happen is the strong, the strong nations that are left 
South Africa, England, Australia, well, England New Zealand, would just buy all the Indian get players. Together. And they would, play, they would play more test cricket and they would package it up properly and do it well. You have to remember here, Darren, 15 years ago, India didn't have this power. Yeah. And, and, and if, so if you go to the, to the um, when Farney was playing in the mid-90s when South Africa came back on the scene in the late 90s, test cricket was thriving. It was yeah. up and about. Uh, we were, it was fantastic. Um, it, it, it can survive. You, 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 India is not bigger than the game, but they're acting bigger than the game. Yeah, because at the moment it just seems like uh, India is bigger than the game. That was the other part of the question. Because without you take Manchester United out, they're, they're probably the biggest club in the world. Football will still survive, you know, and, and that's the thing. I think in many sports there is no team. There's definitely no individuals. There's some that might think they are. There's no team bigger than the game. And there is no federation or country that is bigger than the game. But it just appears that at, at the moment, India feel that they are bigger than the game because of the financial clout that they wield in world cricket at the moment. That's right. And, yeah. and until, the, until the governing system changes, and that's going to take, um, uh, uh, I think as Paul was, was saying before, someone to grow some, um, you're going to keep having this problem. It, doesn't, it, it won't change because people are crying in the crowds like us and in the stands. It will change because some strong leadership yeah. at the top. Uh, funny, we got a tweet here from, uh, from one of our rugby uh, friends, Tank Lanning, uh, former front row forward for Western Province. Uh, so we're even getting the props swaying in now, Dennis. Uh, he said, uh, cricket, <laughs> cricket would definitely survive without India as long as every other country stood together, would take some balls, and that is the crux here, is that we, you know, uh, will everyone be wilting flowers against India? Will some go and some not, if that ever happened? We're not saying it is, but uh, I think that's the key. If everyone stood against them, and, and this whole DRS thing is exactly the point. Why is everyone not standing together going, ICC, make this, a standard because it's ridiculous that everyone uses it, but because India don't feel like using it, they uh, they they don't have to use it in in test series, and we always have to go with them. Yeah, I, I'm not so fussed about the DRS. That that, that was um, you know the rules were if both countries agree, then you use it, and one country doesn't agree, so be it. So they're playing by the rules that everybody signed on to. Yeah. But if I go back to will cricket survive if India's not there? You could almost relate this to South Africa in apartheid days. Um, when uh, officially none of the teams wanted to play South, would play South Africa, but yet you still sent out um, your non-sanctioned teams because the game wanted to see South Africans play in mm -hmm. the world. And if we killed uh, India off and said, we're not playing you, there would still be rebel tours and, and the one of the people will see the games played and it will fix itself through, through the cultural pressure. Dennis, it's awesome having you on the show again. Thanks very much. You can uh, catch Dennis, I think, very regularly on the blog show every Tuesday between uh, 9 and 11. Um, and uh, just uh, before we let you go, also, you've written uh, your, one of your latest columns is about this very subject, right? That's right. I've, uh, uh, ben uh, has kindly put it up on the, the Follow the Bounce okay. uh, w website. And if I can make one last plug for myself, uh, jump onto YouTube and look at uh, The Sledge TV. Um, it's some local made TV here in Melbourne uh, by some amateurs like myself doing some wonderful cricket related stuff and we started our season last night so the Sledge TV on YouTube uh, catch us there awesome stuff always great to chat to you Dennis and always great to talk on uh, on social media and, and particularly on Twitter as well thanks for your time today appreciate it cheers guys bye bye all the best bye bye there we go it's Dennis Friedman from Australia joining the uh, conversation this morning it's been interesting very and uh, we've had yeah, a whole lot of differing uh, opinions. You can also check out Farney's um, article if you just go into the Times of India. I think it is today or yesterday. Um, I, we did retweet it on Twitter as well. He makes some very interesting uh, points. Pretty much what he summed up on the show today. Final thoughts from you, uh, Astrid? I'd like, to, I'd like to talk to the sponsors. Um, you know, I think it's... We're talking about uh, England, South Africa, Australia getting together. But, but you need some of that corporate clout, some of the mm. money clout perhaps behind that united voice. So I think it needs to go beyond into that. We've acknowledged it's about money. So why not get the people who mm. are helping to fund the staging of the cricket to join, uh, join the cause? Okay, well, we can continue this, uh, but maybe take it into another field because I think rugby was kind of facing a similar kind of thing and it was brought up towards the end here as well. Uh, in particular, after, I think after 95 when it went professional and you know, it, was, it was incredibly close that we almost sold our soul to the Australians mm. there and, and that Murdoch actually almost mm. owned all our rugby. And it was obviously a way that he wanted to get Fox into South Africa uh, and how the English Premier League was used as a, as a, a weapon against that happening and, and how a guy like Russell McMillan 
uh, and multi-choice got very much involved in making sure we could keep our rugby and you know dr late in the center of this whole thing uh, that'll be a very interesting show and we'll bring that onto the business support maybe we'll get russell on because he knows basically everything that happened from start to finish there it really would and south africa being such a sports loving nation and people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes so mm. i think that would that's what would make it really really interesting all right well uh in in the next couple of weeks uh, we'll we'll tee that up and maybe get russell mcmillan on the show because that'll be fascinating to uh to listen to as well Thank you very much, guys, for... Uh yeah, thank you. That was very interesting. Mm. I, I just wanted my parting shot quickly. I want to say I hope there's in future a framework and a set of rules uh, which are put in place uh, that we can learn from this situation and perhaps not let it happen again. Who's going to do that? The well, ICC? I, I don't know. That's what, <laughs> doubt it. That's what the whole thing's been about. But yeah. 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 All right. Uh, we're going to uh, podcast this full show. If you joined us only halfway through, we're just going to uh, send it to the BCCI, get their approval, and if they're happy, it'll put it up on our website. <laughs> Stuff that. We're not. We'll put it up on our Touché, website. Touche, Darren. Touche. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. This has been the Business of Sport. Get that and your other favorite sound clips from bulls.co.za now.